Hey there everyone, Maria Marquis here. And in this video, we're gonna give you an introduction to how to think about the Coda formula language so you can start to translate your ideas into some cool math. So I'm not a technical person, but what I like about the Coda formula language is that we can think about it just like written or spoken human language. It has rules, it has grammar, and once you know a few of those rules, you can start to put sentences, AKA formulas together. So let's explore. The first rule is that there are nouns and verbs. In Coda, you'll notice that the nouns, the objects, if you wanna get fancy about it, are in those little chips. Right here we see they're green and pink. Those are objects. But then we also have verbs. And in formula language, those are called functions. They allow you to do something, take action on that object. And again, those will be in that kind of black text and objects, nouns, will be in those colored chips. So we have nouns and verbs, but those colors actually tell us something too. Colors tell us the location. So here I've actually got a formula. I'm going to right click on it to open it up. And notice some of these chips are green and some are pink. That tells me they are from different places. It's kind of like a passport. Every passport will have a slightly different color. That lets you know it's from a different location. So here we know that we're working with two tables because we have green and then we have pink. The next little clue that we see in those chips comes through the icons. The icon tells you what type of data it is. Are you dealing with apples, oranges, or bananas? So in this case, we could have some text, we could have dates, we could have numbers, check boxes, percentages, duration, etc. So this is a great way to make sure that you're dealing with what you think you're dealing with. Now, the icons also tell us about something called arrays, which is a fancy way of saying a list. You have more than one object in that list. So let's right click on this formula right here. Notice how we've got some of these icons that are solo. We have a solo table, we have a solo row, we have a solo row here. But notice for type, we've got that little stack. That lets us know we're dealing with multiple rows. You'll see that anytime you've got a list or array of information. The next trick that I always like to tell people is that you can find your sentences in your formulas by clicking on parentheses. So you can see where each phrase or sentence begins and ends. So let's right click on this formula right here. Notice I can just click on that parentheses and it shows me, ah, there's the end of that sentence. Same thing if I click here, it's gonna show me the end of that sentence and here I see the end of that sentence. It's a nice way to kind of see what are the different pieces and are the right things together inside of those little phrases. The other trick that I like when I'm writing a formula is that you can always click on those little chips, those objects to learn more about them. So let's right click on this formula and see what's under the hood. I could click on this and it's gonna let me know, hey, that is a table on the data page and it has 46 rows and eight columns. I can click on this little guy and it says, hey, this is going to be a type in that blog post table. It comes from rows of another place. And I can click on any of these to get more of that detail. So you can always dig and understand a little bit more. The last thing I wanna share with everybody is that there's a couple tips that we've made in the Coda formula language to make it easier to write things. So let's explore. I've got them here on the screen, but let's see what it looks like in practice. The first thing to know is that you can always expand this. Give yourself a little more space to write by clicking on Expand Editor. And if you ever wanna make a line break or a new paragraph, if we wanna use human language, you just need to type Shift Enter. And you can do that as much as you like. It's not gonna impact how it's written. So that's a nice way to just give yourself some space to think. You also, if you're like, I don't even know if I need to have a space here. Do I need space to think? I'm not sure. Just go ahead, click up on auto format, and it'll automatically make it look super cool, like you're a coder, and show you how everything is split up. So it creates those paragraphs for you. Sometimes you also might be writing a formula and you wanna leave a note for yourself. If that's the case, what you can do is just type slash slash. That's gonna tell Coda, hey, this is just a note for my future self or for somebody else who's gonna work with me here. Don't do anything with it. And I can say, this is the part of the formula that pulls what I want from the table. So now if you come back, you'll go, oh, that's right. This is my filter formula. Cool, I got it. Let's take a look at some of the other tips that I really like. The other thing that you can do is you can name your formulas. Maybe you write a formula that's just amazing. You're gonna use it over and over again in your doc. Well, you can give it a name so you don't have to write it from scratch every time. 
So here I could call this Maria's cool filter formula for blog posts. <laughs> you can name it whatever you like. And then now I can type equals and go Maria's cool filter formula for blog posts. There it is. I press enter and it's automatically going to give it to me right here. So again, the code of formula language, it's just like learning a new language if you were going to travel somewhere. It's got some rules. And once you know the basics, you can start to take a look at those complex formulas and learn a little bit more about what they are. So now it's your turn. Start exploring, maybe write a formula, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.